the density lab. We are going to be calculating the density, which of course is something you can't measure. You have to calculate it by measuring the mass of something in grams. There's one gram. And the volume of something in milliliters. There's one milliliter. So we are going to be measuring the density of several different materials and objects in this lab. On the front side, we're going to be doing the solids. We are going to be doing a wooden block. That's this one. We are going to be doing a triangular block. That's this one. Light. Okay, we're going to be doing a cylindrical. Well, for this case, we're going to use this one. Okay, this little one is going to be the cylindrical block. And the metal cylinder, well, that's a good one. There's the metal cylinder. And we're going to do a brick. Well, there's your brick, a regular old brick. And we're going to be calculating the density of all of them. Well, we're not going to calculate all of them. We're going to get the masses and the measurements. You're going to have to put them all together to get the volumes. And then you're going to have to calculate the density using your calculator mass divided by volume. So whatever you have here, whoosh, divided by whatever you get here. So how are we going to get the volumes if we only have measurements? Well, we're going to use some geometry. You never thought you'd use your geometry, but now you got to use it. The formula for a rectangular block is width times length times height. So here's a rectangular block. Here's a rectangular block. Well, this is not a rectangular block, but wait a second. If I put two of them together, notice that is a rectangular block. Or here's a good example. Okay, it's all the same color. Isn't that a rectangular block? And then what would you do? You calculate it and then divide by two. It's half of a rectangular block. When you are measuring the width, length, and height, it doesn't really matter which one is the height, right? Because you can hold it any which way. What matters is you get all three dimensions, x, y, and z. So the best way to do that is pick a corner, and from that corner, the three edges that meet at that corner are the three dimensions. Sometimes they're the same. Like, for example, if I got a cube, if I had a cube like this, if I pick this corner, well, of course, it's a cube. So all three of those that meet right there are actually all going to be the same, but those are definitely all three dimensions. Okay. So for example, this is 10 by 10 by 10. So it's 10 by 10 is 100 times 10 is 1000. This is 1000 cubic centimeters. Okay, this particular one, which of course, is 1000 milliliters, which of course is a liter, one liter. So this is a, is a container that contains 1000 milliliters. This cube, which we just talked about, which is of course, on each side, if you line it up correctly, it's 10 centimeters on a side, right? If you line it up perfectly, it's hard for me to do this with the camera, okay? Now notice that it fits perfectly inside there. So that is a liter. And then, well, we don't want to measure things in liters. That is one way to do it. Um, for example, you could say the density, we talk about water, the density of water, you could give it in terms of liters of water. Well, if you have a liter of water, the mass of it is one kilogram. So here we see the mass of one kilogram and the volume of one liter. Okay, but there's another way that we usually give the density of water. Usually we give it as here's one little milliliter and here's one little gram. One gram per milliliter. I could put that right on top. So that's the density of water. In every milliliter, you'll have one gram. That's actually the definition of the gram. That's where the gram came from, that's for the definition of the gram. So it kind of has to be, as long as you have very pure water at around normal temperatures, you will have a density of 1.0000 for distilled water, okay? Um, by the way, a dollar bill has the mass of one gram, if you want to think of something that has a gram. And interestingly, a nickel has just about the mass of five grams, just like you'd think, five cents, it's also five grams. So if you need a handy dandy um, example of one gram or five grams, use a dollar for one or a nickel for five. Okay, after we do all these solids, we're going to get their, again, their volumes using geometry. Oh, I forgot to mention cylinders. Well, cylinders, you can't use width times length times height. 
So we have another formula, other geometry we have to use. It, the volume of a cylinder is pi r squared times h. So we got to find that r. The problem is when a cylinder, well, measuring r can be tricky because you have to find the exact center. I don't really know that's the exact center right there. That looks like the diameter, and this looks like the radius. Remember, the radius is from the middle out, and the diameter is all the way across the circle. But you know what? I can't be sure that's the center. This is not the best way to measure it. So what we're going to do instead is we're going to go around the outside using some string, and we're going to measure the string and find the circumference. And then we're going to use the formula, just dividing it by pi to get the diameter, and then dividing that by 2 to get the radius. And then that's where we're going to get our r. Well, the h is pretty easy. This is the h. Now notice that that's assuming the cylinder is standing up. That's the height. But you know, no matter which way you put it, that is the h. That's what we're talking about there, the h. So for a cylinder, all you really need is r and h. So when we say measurements, well, for the ones that are uh, rectangular blocks or triangular blocks, we'll have width, length, and height. We'll have three. And for the ones that are cylinders, we'll have an r. Or actually, you know what? I'm not even going to put the r here. I'm going to put the circumference here. So you calculate the r. Circumference and h. And that should be enough to calculate the volume. Just remember to use the correct formula. And then, if, again, if it's the triangle, okay, well, we're going to measure the three that meet at a corner, and then we're going to divide by two because it's half of a rectangular block. Okay, so that's for the solids. Then, on page two... We are going to do the liquids. So this time we're doing it a little differently. We're going to use a whole bunch of different colored liquids. Notice how each one has its own color. It's almost a rainbow of colors that we're going to use. Each one of these liquids is something different. I'm just going to tell you what one of them is. That one, the clear one. Guess what it is? Water. So one of them is water. So we're going to see which ones are denser than water and which ones are rarer than water. That's the word for lower density. And we're going to try to make a column of liquids. Once we get their densities measured, well, liquids, we can just pour them into graduated cylinders. And we can put that on there to get the mass, right? We can put it on the balance to get its mass if we zero this thing out. And then what will that tell us? Will it tell us whether they're denser than water or rarer than water? Remember, water has a density of one gram per milliliter. One. So if something has a density greater than one, well, it's going to be sort of more packed together than water, more concentrated than water in terms of its mass, so it's going to want to go to the bottom. If something is rarer than water, it's going to want to go to the top. So what we're going to try to do is stack these liquids and have them in order of decreasing density from the bottom to the top, not actually in this graduated cylinder, but in a different one, and we're going to try to, and then maybe put a little cork on top of that. Okay, because corks are bark of an oak tree from Spain, and it actually are there known for having a very low density. Okay, so let's see here. And of course, density, what does it tell you? This is the phenomenon. It tells you if something is going to float. What about this metal plate? Do you think that metal plate's going to float? Let's see. No, it doesn't float. What about this foam block? Do you think it's going to float? Oh, look, it does float. Uh, let's see, a bunch of cylinders. What about, what about this one, this plastic cylinder? I'm not sure. Let's put it in. Okay, so it does sink to the bottom. So what does that mean? That means its density is greater than the density of water, greater than one. What about this one? Is this going to float? Okay, oh, it does float. So what does that mean about its density? It means that its density is less than one. Okay, let's try a few others. Let's see, that one sinks. What about that one sinks? Okay, are any of these other ones going to float? Let me just put a few more in. Well, so all the ones that, let me try some other things. So all the things that are sort of floating in here, their density has to be less than water. And, we, and the Archimedes principle is the reason they have buoyancy. They're displacing the water, and then the weight of the displaced water is pushing up against them, holding them uh, buoyantly on the surface. Um, so basically, you can tell if your answers are reasonable, because if you think, well, I think this should float, well, then its density should be less than one. By the way, I'm going to have this lab uh, performed by my assistants. They're going to be taking measurements. So if they do anything like lab error, just make sure to take note of that. But that's sort of what happens with any lab. When students do labs, 
you know, there's lots of little things that can go wrong. And think about density, basically how packed together a material is. Something that is dense, something that is rare. Remember, rare is the opposite of dense. This feels very light for its size. So it's low density. All right, here we go. It's the density lab with my three assistants, small, medium, and large. And they're writing their name on the lab, or Lysias. So we are doing the density lab. The first object is what? What's the first object on the table? It's measurement. What's the first object? Um, sorry, wooden block. Okay, so get the wooden block. Ian, what are you going to do? You can say what you're doing. You can say what you're doing. <laughs> What's the mass? One, one, eight, one, five. Yeah, don't forget the decimal. One, one, eight. Point one, five. Point one, five. I didn't see that. Ian, do you know what I the unit is? What's the unit here? It's uh, that unit. Lucy wrote it. Look, good. Okay. So now, give it to Giovanna. Giovanna, take the measurements. How are you doing this, by the way? Oh, the red line still match up right here. But how do you know you're getting all three? Um, I'm picking this corner. So. Okay. Um, I would say... 8.3. Okay, so this is writing that down. What did you write that down as, Lucy? But did you write it as W? Oh, yeah. Width. Okay. Okay. What's this next one going to be? What letter? 3.5. That would be... You're writing this one as what, Lucy? Length. Length? What was and it? what's the unit? Oh, it's centimeters. What was it, Giovanna? Oh, my gosh. It was 3.5. Sure so now we need the third one. Probably the same. Mm. Looks like the same, but maybe not. We'll see. Right. Oh, 8.5. And then height is H equals, what does it say? 8.5. Okay, good. Nice and neat. Very good, Lucy. Very good. Okay. So now those three measurements, what's the unit? Centimeters. Always write a unit. So now, those three multiplied together will give you the volume. If you multiply them together, it'll come out in cubic centimeters. Okay, now let's do what's the second object? It's the triangular block, the red one. So now notice, put those back together. Notice that two of them together make a rectangular block. So we're going to do this exact same thing to measure it, and then students are going to divide it by two. Okay, so give it to Ian. Now do I make Yeah. Take the mass. Remember, this is the mass. One, two, six, nine. But don't forget, see that point? That's very important. That's the decimal. So, oh my god, what? I just can't see it from you. <laughs> okay. Just remember, on this balance, there's always two numbers after that dot. Because <laughs> you're short. Okay. And then, so, good, Lucy. And you wrote the unit, 12.69. But Ian, this has to be in the camera from above. Okay, now give it to Giovanna. And Giovanna, just start, Lucy, just start writing your W's, L's, and H's. Okay. We're going to do the same thing, width times length times height, but don't forget, don't forget to divide it by two if you're doing the calculation for volume, for students. Okay. We're not going to do it for you. Exactly eight. Exactly eight what? Um, eight centimeters. So I would write eight point what? Zero. Right, eight point zero. Try to keep a number in the tenths place, okay? Because that's how accurate we can be. Now, Giovanna, I would measure, look, I would measure it the same way. Which corner are you picking? Which corner? Wait, I, I would do the same thing. I would pick the same corner okay, okay. and measure these three because it works, it's just easier to understand how it's half of a rectangular block. Oh, okay. Yeah, this is eight again. So it, it makes sense that looking at these, that of course, two of them, it looks equilateral. So that means that two sides should be the same. That makes sense. And then... And this one's four. Exactly. And so four, how would you write that? 
Zero right. Centimeters. They're all centimeters. Good, good. So now, don't forget, you multiply those together, but then what do you have to do to get the volume correctly? You multiply all of them. Multiply them together, and then? And then divide it by the mass. Divide it by two. Don't forget to divide by two. Okay, so that's the wooden block and the triangular block. Now we're going to have to swap out the balances for the next ones. Now let's see if those objects float. Let's see if the wooden block floats. Ian, could you take the wooden block and see if it floats in water? It does. Okay. So that's one thing that tells you something about what the density is going to be. Now take the triangular block, Ian, and put it in the water. You can drop those. Does that float? And yes, it does. So that tells us something about the density we should expect for them. So what's the next object? It's the cylindrical block. So let's have Ian take the mass. Now this is too heavy for the other balance, so Ian's going to take the mass on the triple beam balance. He's been messing around with this. I think he knows how to do it. So it's now. He's going to slide that over until it goes down. Make sure it's in the notches. Okay. <laughs> It's more, is it in the notch? Make sure it's in the notch. It is? Okay, now try the next one. Add more. It's more than 500, more than 510, more than 520. So what he's doing is he's seeing how much the mass of this object is by adding up these other masses. This is a big one. Oh, when you see that happen, you know you're getting close, right? When you see that it move like that. Oh, so it's less than 580. So he's gone back to, is it in the notch? 570, is it right in the notch? Check it. Check it. Okay. Okay, good. Now we have to do the spine adjustment. So this is a pretty massive object. The reason we're doing it on this is because it exceeds the limit of the other balance. Do you want to use this to push it? Yeah. Just going to tap it along until it goes down. Oh good, these are all going to be in one field of view. Very close. You can see when it's teetering, you know you're getting real close. Oh, you know what? That's close enough, Ian. Could you read it off? What does that add up to? Um, 577. Oh yeah, that's a very good one. Okay, so Lucy, give, you the pen, give Lucy the pen. So that's the mass of that. And you don't have to put point anything, just put, Masses, the, put the grams. This isn't accurate enough to get more than... We could get a tenth of a gram, but we don't have it. Should I take this off and zero grams. You don't zero on this one. There's a different way to do it. No, but now give yeah. it to Giovanna. Oh, yeah, yeah, put it on zero. But actually, the next one, Ian, we're going to use a different balance. You'll see. Okay. Can, you, uh, can you just give that to him? Okay, Giovanna. So, Giovanna, what are you measuring on this cylinder? Like, you're measuring the H oh, the height. and well we need the R but you're going to measure the circumference to get we're going to give the students circumference and then remember the formula to convert from circumference to radius is this because remember pi is the ratio of pi is the ratio of diameter to circumference if you multiply diameter times circumference time, sorry, multiply diameter times pi, you get circumference. Or if you divide circumference by pi, you get diameter. So see what she's doing? She's going right around it with a string, marking the string. I'm just making that very visible. Okay, very visible. And then get it to the nearest point one centimeters. Don't forget. Here. Don't forget to start. Where the red line is. You just need to find it. Oh, found it. So what's the C? Circumference. Does he write in C? Okay, Circumference on. equals? 18.5. What's the unit? Centimeters. 
Okay, and now you need the H, Giovanna. Get the H of that thing. Ten point nine. What's the unit? Centimeters. Yeah, try to get in the habit of always saying the unit, because ten point nine doesn't really mean anything un unless it has a unit. Okay, so I think that's everything that students need to get the density because they can plug those in. Well, they can convert that to radius, get the radius, put it there. That's the H, put it there and get the volume. Once they have the volume, you know, mass divided by volume, they can get the density. But now let's see if that floats. I'll let Giovanna do this one. Giovanna, put it in the water. The water's over here. Just put it next to those things. Let's see if it floats. No, sideways. Put it sideways. Okay. I can't tell if it floats if it's taller than the water. Does that float? No. So what do we know about the density of that object? It's very heavy and it sinks. It's higher than one. Because the density of water is one gram per milliliter or cu per cubic centimeter. Okay. Okay, so what's the next object? The metal cylinder. The metal cylinder. There. Okay, so Ian, in order to take the mass of this heavy one, we're using the traditional kind of Libra balance, one versus the other. So he's going to start massing, putting masses on one side. Well, it was less than a kilogram. Okay. It's more than, what was that one? 500, more than 500. Oh, less than 700. So it's more than what? More than 600, okay. So now let's keep adding until we get the mass of it. So when the two sides are equal, these will add up to the mass of this object. So see what he's doing. He's adding, he's adding masses till it goes down, and then he's putting in smaller ones, and then that little bar in the front is a fine adjustment. Oh, Ian, make sure that little bar is all the way on zero. That should be all the way on zero before you Okay. Okay, good. Keep going. If it moves very slowly, you know you're getting very close. Okay, so add some more. More than that. Oh, oh wow. Oh wow. Close enough. I think that's it. That's pretty good. Very close, within a gram. Um, let's see, what do these add up to? Mm. 500, 100, that's 600. And what's this one? This one's a five, and this one's a two. So that's 607. So write it down, Lucy. Now give it to Giovanna and she can take the measurements. Oh, yeah. Just like last time, yeah. just like last time, it's the circumference, and the height. The circumference and the height are what we need. So make sure to go straight around like the equator of it, right? So like it's like that. so that you're not going at an angle, right? Put a mark on it. Where they meet, right where they meet. Dark mark. Hold the pen sideways, it makes a dark mark. Let's see. Makes a dark mark if you, you need to hold it. Okay, now measure that. And then Lucy. That's going to be your C, Lucy. Write down C. Okay. C equals what? I need to get it. I wonder if this is how they have originally figured out pi. Um, it's like 8.1. What's the unit? Centimeters. Always give a unit, please. And then, what's the other dimension you need? I need the height. The height. Yeah. So what's the height? Dad, should I put these back? Sure. There's, you get this right 15.3. 
So with that, just like before, it's the same formula for a cylinder. So you're going to use circumference, divided by pi, divided by 2 to get the radius, plug it in there. Use that h directly, plug it in there, and what you get will come out in cubic centimeters, boom. And then you can use that to get the density, because we have the mass, divided by the volume, boom. Okay, so what's the next object? It's the brick. The brick? Okay, pass it to Ian. <laughs> Ian, here you go. Ready for this, Ian? No, no, gentle. He can handle it. He can handle it. <laughs> That's a brick. Yep. It's hanging in the air in exactly the way that bricks don't. Oh my god. Now remember, you want to put something... Wait, hold on. You want to put something on there that makes it go down, Ian, and then take it back off, just to make sure. So what you want to do is get... Remember, that's why we have extra, yeah, no. extra big ones, extra kilos. So let's see, is it more than, it's more than one kilogram, it's more than two kilograms, it's less than three. So it's more than two and less than three. So now, now you want to add the next one, right? Because bricks are pretty massive, they're massive objects. Yeah, keep adding. Keep adding till it goes down, yeah. Oh, keep yeah. adding. No, not that. <laughs> oh, so we're getting close. We've gone over. Mm. Oh, that's very close. So take that off, but it's going to be probably going to be this one. Okay, and then you need to add smaller ones. Small. Maybe really small ones. Okay, well that's going to. Yeah. Okay. It's doing great. You're doing great, yeah. Oh my god. This is... Let's make sure that this is on zero exactly. Okay. That's it's very one. close. I would take that back off and put a smaller one though, just okay. to get it more exact. Yeah. Put a smaller one. And okay. Now, if it's a fine adjustment, you can slide this over, and these get this gets added to that. Slide it over slightly. Do you want the penny? Okay, so let's see. Do you know what each one of these is actually? One thousand. So how many would this be, Lucy? What do you think? Two thousand. Two thousand. Sorry, two thousand. 200. This is another 100. That's another 100. 300. Um, 12. Wait, and then don't forget to add this. Um, it's a 1. 2,313. And what's the unit? Grams. Because without that, it doesn't mean anything. So now that now pass it to Giovanna. Well, first pass it to Giovanna, the brick, and then she can measure. What are you going to measure on that one? What do you think? I'm going to pick a corner. Yeah. And yeah, it's going to. What What are the three dimensions? What are you going to call them? Length, height, and width. Okay. So which corner are you picking? I'm going to pick this one. Okay. Twenty point three unit. Oh, um, let's say ten meters. Oh yeah. Mm -hmm. And then you're going from the same corner, right? Yeah. Okay. okay. Um, five point five. What's your unit? Centimeters. Okay. <laughs> Are you serious? What's your unit? Centimeters. Mm -hmm. Okay, you always have to say a unit because if you just give a number without a unit, it doesn't mean anything. So now using that, students can calculate width times length times height, get the volume, and then mass divided by volume gives you density. 
Okay, and that'll be the density of brick. Oh, do you think bricks float? No, no. Giovanna, take it over here. I, I don't believe You know what? We might have to take uh, take you, that. Can you take these out? I can't. Take those out, yeah. Uh -huh. Yeah. Just, just look. Really quick. And the other ones here. No, don't put... Yeah, put them on this part of the table. Should you take this one? Just get it. It's okay. Okay. <laughs> so now put it in slowly. Slowly. Okay, let's just... Do <laughs> bricks float? Well, what do you think? No. no. So what's, what does that mean about the density of a brick? The density yeah, has to be greater than... Yes! One! Okay. Oh yeah, that's cool. The bubble's coming yeah. out. That means it must have had air inside the brick. Isn't that's that neat? Cool. It has little cracks. That means there's little air pockets. So now they're filling up with water. The brick is getting wet. So now if we took the mass now, the brick, the mass would be different, wouldn't it? So that's the solids until we get to the aluminum foil. The metal cylinder, does it float? I do not think it will, but... Nope. <laughs> <laughs> You're right. So what does that mean about its density? That means it's greater than one. Yes! <laughs> now, we're doing part two, the liquids. We're going to take these liquids, find their densities, and we are going to make a column out of them. That is the trick. So. What liquid are you going to start with, Giovanna? I'm going to start with the clear one. Okay. So, Ian, what are you doing? Yeah. All right. Sorry. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then you need that. Now, what do you have to do, Ian? Um, tear it. So now it's ignoring the mass of that cylinder. Now, Ian's not going to hit that button again. Giovanna's going to pour the clear liquid in. Pour it in most of the way, and then add little bits with the pipette, the micro pipette. We want to get it right on what number, Giovanna? The 100 milliliter. Good unit. And then what about the meniscus, that bowl shape? Get it like right above it. Like so the bottom of the meniscus is on the 100, right? So she's eyeballing it up to a point, and then if she overshoots it, it's not a problem because she can siphon some out, or if she goes a little under, she can add a little squirt and get it right on. But you want to make sure it's resting on the table, Giovanna, because you can't really tell unless it's flat and you have to drop down. You have to look at it at eye level. You might have to kneel down to look at eye level. Yeah. So right like this. Let's see. Sometimes we have to kneel down in chemistry. We're not like the free folk north of the wall. What? What? <laughs> this is so great. <laughs> It's a Game of Thrones bro. Yeah, okay. You're too young. Is that right on the 100? Yeah. Now put it back on the balance and let's see what the mass is. Remember, we didn't tear it again, so this should be the right. Okay, write that down, Lucy. She wrote down clear. Ian, what's the number? 98.41. I would say 98.41 grams. Grams, boom, okay. So now you can pour that back in the flask. Yeah, okay. What's your next color, Giovanna? I'm gonna go with the yellow one. Oh, you're going like all random. Yeah, no, I'm not. No. You're just picking colors. Okay. And the colors. Now put it back on its spot. Put it back on its correct spot, please. So we need to do the same thing with the graduated cylinder again. Remember? Put it on. That's the one I just used. It's fine. Okay. It's okay. So what do you have to do, Ian? Um, tear it. Tear it. Yeah. Tear is like zeroing. Okay. So now that's zeroed. Now don't tear it again until she's added it. And we're going to add how much, Giovanna? Uh, this is like deja vu. Uh. It's like deja vu all over again. Wait, it's over. Interesting guess, Joanna. Maybe. These are all different liquids. We're keeping the mystery liquids so it doesn't prejudice. No, it, it is. <laughs> I can tell. We're going to keep the mystery liquids so it doesn't prejudice people's concept of their density. Okay. Oh, gosh, it was really good. Oh, yeah. Is it? Oh, well. Yeah. So, what's the mass of this one? What is it, Ian? Um, 
dot five. I would say ninety point zero five. What's the unit? Grams. Grams. Okay. That. Now that one, pour it back in. Then it, right? We'll be doing something else with it. Yeah, yeah. Mm. Pour it all in. Okay. What's your next liquid, Giovanna? Um, which is the one you just yeah. used? Which is the one you just used? Give it to Lucy. <laughs> okay. What's the next liquid, Giovanna? Blue liquid. So Ian, same thing. Ian, no wait, Giovanna. He's got to get the. Okay. Blue. Blue. Carrot. So now we know the drill. We're doing the same thing repetitively oh, for yeah, six yeah. liquids. So now again, same drill. I'm just going to answer before you even say it. <laughs> <laughs> I wasn't going to say that. I was going to say, how many cubic centimeters is it? <laughs> <laughs> it's the same thing, because a cubic centimeter is a milliliter. See, like this oh, is a cubic okay. centimeter. It's also a milliliter. They're the same exact thing. Wait. Do you know what they call them in medicine? They call them CCs. So now we got the mass. Well, that was fast. Was it right on the 100? Yeah. I hope you're measuring carefully. I'm good at this. Okay. So what would you read that as, Ian? 75, what did it say? 0.66 grams. Good, good. Now let's pour that back in. We got a whole system here. This is great. It's like clockwork. And then Lucy's going to go clean that one while we're wa oh, she's waiting. It's going to clean that one out oh, so they don't get contaminated. Right? Oh, where's the yeah, it's okay. It's okay. Oh, well. We probably only need two, really. Yeah, you're right. Alternating. Wait, which one are they? Green. Green. <laughs> <laughs> oh, this is. Mm -hmm. If you go over, you can pour it back in. You can pour some back. You can go over this time. You're getting too confident. <laughs> Overconfident. Do it, then I would take like an hour. That's, oh man, are you gonna take that, Ian? Yeah, he is. <laughs> but he'd do it very carefully, wouldn't he? Okay. Oh my god, you didn't tear the balance. So pour it back in. We can use one of that. No, we can use one of Oh, yeah, yeah. You know what? Yeah, that's true. That's Ooh. true. Good, good point, Lucy. So tear that one, and once you get it measured exactly 100. Get it measured 100 and then you can just pour it straight in there. Good point, Lucy. Thank this is another you. way. This is another way to do it. Good call. So that would have been a lab error, but Lucy saved us. Thank you, Lucy. <laughs> thanks. Thanks a lot, Lucy. Oh, no, Serious. But I mean it. Dad, 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 you said I could but wait. carry it, but. Wait, did you just add more? What? A little bit. Okay, because it wasn't. Ex I thought it was Here at 100. Okay, now put it on there. That's the same one we teared, right? It better be. Yes. Well, this could be a source. I poured it. Okay, okay. okay. So, what's the mass? Ian, what is the mass there? Um, 116.2 grams. Point zero 0.02. That's important. Good, Lucy got it written I right. Okay, so now pour that back. Oh, wow, this is a. This is. This is another way to do it. You know, we could measure it out and then pour it in. I, it wasn't the way I thought of doing it. So how many have we done now? We've done four of them. Do I zero it? Yeah. We're on the fifth one. That's fine. That's fine. That's fine. She's clean both of them. Clean both of them? Oh, I thought oh, she... No, no. It's okay. Okay. So now, what do you what do you want to do? Let's just zero. Let's just do it the regular way. Just Ian, what do you do? Let's see which one should we do? Tara. Okay, I would call that brown. My kids seem to think it's black. Oh, no, no, it is brown. They got to me. Okay, brown or black? Well, just Lucy's gonna probably write. What are you gonna call it? Black. black. Okay, oh, write it down. What? What? It looks like black. It's dark. In any at any rate, it's a dark liquid. Does it smell at all? Black. Don't give it away. These are mystery oh, liquids. I know what. No, you don't. Yes, I do. I know what it is. Too. What is this? Oh, Oh, sh sh 
students aren't supposed to prejudice their density. Oh, yeah. I know. I know, but this is even better. That's one of the few advantages to doing it on a lab. Jeez. I know. Don't take away the advantages. <laughs> I don't do that. Oh, come on. Oh, you do. Try to get it exact. As exact as you can. That's important. With the, with the mm -hmm. apparatus we have, we can't be super exact, but we can get it certainly within a milliliter. Certainly within one milliliter, which is going to give us a good density. Now, we used to do this lab, by the way. Students would only use 10 milliliters, but their density wasn't as accurate. Because we're yeah. using 100, this is going to give us a good... So, Ian, what number is that? Um, uh, what is this? It's Do I have to think? 105. Okay. One, zero, five. Point. Point. I would say 105.89 grams. Is that what you wrote, Lucy? Yeah, you Good. told me. Yeah, Lucy, you must it's okay, it's okay, it's okay. It's 105. It's okay, Ian. It's 105. Now, now let's, let's Ian, zero, tear it, zero it. And then let's put that. Is this our last one? Yep. Oh, wow, you guys are really like I clockwork. I don't know if, I, I don't think I could have done this any faster. Then you guys are doing it. I mean, this is yeah, you're very efficient. I know, but you're very efficient. Did you tear it? Did he tear that? Are you sure? Did you tear it? Did you tear it? Tear it. Okay, good. Now, what color? Red. Red. Let's see, you come back? This is, you don't have to put it in. Yeah, that's wine, Giovanna. No, it's not. <laughs> so it's red? Oh, 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 oh. Red. This is just... I mean, what color does that? Look like to you. Cardinal. My my grandma used to call cardinals red jays because they're like blue jays, but they're red. Is it right on the hundred? Make sure it's right on there. Oh, how wow! Okay. And what is the number, Ian? Read it out correctly. 72.74 grams. Good. Okay. So now, because they all have the same volume, even though we haven't calculated... So you're going to pour that back? Yeah. Even though we haven't calculated the densities yet, which students will have to do, they'll have to divide mass by volume, mm -hmm. we can compare them directly because they're all the same volume. So if the volumes are all the same, the difference in mass will tell us the density. So now, Lucy, you want to rank them, find the number that is the highest number of all these and put a number one. Then the next highest number, put a number two. You want to rank these. And then we're going to make the column of liquids out of that. Can you do that real quick? Um, do you want me to like... What's the highest them? number of all of these? It's 116.02. So, so write a number one next to that. No, next to that one. I uh, know. The 116. Oh, okay. So one... And then two, three. Just make that into a three. Just make that a three. You can make a one into a three. One looks just like a three. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No! Um, four. And then one, two, three, five, six. So now they're ranked in order of densest to rarest. Do you know the word rarest, Lucy? Um, like the most, the least common. Least common, but in this sense, it means the most sort of spread out, the least concentrated sort of thing. Yeah. So rare, rare is the opposite of dense. So we're going from densest to rarest, and that's the order we want to put them in the column of liquids, which is our next step. So now we're going to make a column of the liquids in order of density. And Lucy's going to tell Giovanna which ones to put in in which order. So Lucy, which one is the first one she needs to put in? It is green. Okay. So she's going to put the green one in. Why is that, Lucy? Because it's density number... Is greater than one. I mean, what's the density on there? And the density oh, ranking... 116. Yeah, but the density ranking is number one. That's why. So we're going to do them in order of their ranking and density because they were all the same volume. It was the same. Just comparing their masses will tell you their relative densities. You'll see that when you calculate them for students that don't understand what I mean. 
you'll see that when you divide, because you're dividing them all by 100. So the largest number mass will be the largest density in this case. Okay, maybe the one on the bottom put an extra one in, maybe put one more in, yeah, just, just maybe even one more, just okay. so, because the one on the bottom can be as big as you want. So what Giovanna just did is she added the densest liquid that we ascertained was the green one. Uh, what's number two? Number two is black. Or brown. Okay. You can bring this over toward you if that's easier. Bring the whole thing toward you. Now this is the tricky part. Let's see. Just adding it very, very slowly at an angle. And look where it goes. This is the one with the second highest density. Very good, very good. Each pipette you squirt in is probably between two and two and a half milliliters. You don't have to get the last little bit, just get the next one. Each little bit you put in, each little micro pipette squirt, generally they hold about two milliliters, sometimes 2.5. So maybe put in like four of those, I would say. Very good, very good. So notice what's happening here. And when you tilt that back up, Giovanna, do it very slowly. And okay. let's show people what it looks like after adding all four of those, because this is something we want people to understand, students to understand. Very good technique, bam. And she's doing it just right. Was that the third one or the fourth, fourth. one? That was fourth. Now straighten it out. Now look, hold the white <laughs> card behind it. Let's put the white card behind it. Wow. Notice very clearly they are separated. Now why? Why do you think? This one is denser. This one is, what's that word? Rarer. So the denser one wants to sink to the bottom. The rarer one wants to float to the top, just like we saw the wood float, right? But if they're already like that, maybe they'll stay like that if you're careful. Okay. Uh, what's number three? Clear. Okay. No. Yeah. <laughs> I guess the clear one I'll just tell you is, what is it? Water. That's just distilled water. So now we are at a density of one. What did we get for that? Let's see, what density did we calculate? Um, we got, for the first one? For, for the clear. Um, 98.41 grams. 98.41. So what we should have had is, 100 grams, but you know what? That's pretty close. We might have been two grams off. You're doing it very slowly, right? Yeah. Very, very slowly. Interesting. Okay, keep going. Oh, you're, it's like you can't really. You're doing fine. Yeah, because it's clear. Because it's clear. Okay. It's okay. Some layers, by the way, are very difficult to keep separate. Some of the layers are very, very challenging. It depends on a number of factors. There's even some things I'm not mentioning, by the way, in this lab. Yeah. Certain things I'm leaving out. We'll talk about way later, like in chemistry page. What number is that? Three. And Why don't you get a head start, Lucy, and tell her what the next one is going to be? Number four is yellow. Okay. Can you straighten it out slowly and show us if you manage to keep that Kinda. separated? Kind of separated. We get a little bit of mixing there. Okay, that's okay. So then... Okay, yellow? Yeah. It is actually a little harder to do it in a wider graduated cylinder. Oh. I think right after this, we're also going to do it in a very skinny one, which is much easier for you, Giovanna, okay. where you maybe just put in one squirt, uh, one or two squirts of each one. So we might do that right afterwards also, which is a little easier. This is actually very difficult to achieve technically to not have them plunge into each other and disturb the layer below to agitate it and mix. We do not know what this yellow liquid is. We are not saying what this yellow liquid Fine. may or may not be. Which we know. But do you know? Yes. Okay, don't say it. The point is that some of it will bias some of it will bias people's opinion about density oh i think this one's gonna work 
I hope we're not filling up the whole thing. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, you don't have to tilt it quite as much when we get to the last few, I guess. Uh, just don't spill it out, okay? So let's see how yeah, this is looking. Do it slowly, works. do it slowly. Okay, so that's a clear separation, but the two layers below it may have mixed a bit. Okay, so Lucy, what's the next one? What's the next one? The next one is blue. Got it. <laughs> okay. Blue. Is this number four or five? Is this number five? Yeah. Oh, wow. So we're getting closer to the rarest liquid. I'm going to say that again because people think rare is like a coin that was only misprinted once and the hard to find. But rare can also mean not dense, like rare air. If you're up on a mountaintop, Lucy, there's <laughs> rare air up there. <laughs> what? I'm going to be able to Oh, you're going a little too fast there, maybe. Yeah. Just don't, you don't want to push it too fast because then it'll disturb. Oh, actually, no, it didn't matter. Doing great. Yeah. Doing great. Is that the fourth one? Let's see, let's see, let's see, let's yeah, see. Oh, where's the white? That's the fifth one? Okay, let's see the colors behind it. Whoa. Oh, I, ca I can't see it because you're, okay. Oh, Hold that down like behind it. Yeah. Okay, and now? What's the last color? Red. Red is the last one? Okay. So let's see, let's see. Good technique. Oh, that's cool. Yeah, it's hard to get these so great. Did I mention that some of these liquids are flammable? Yes, many times. So Did many, I mention that a, half of these liquids are flammable? No. no. That's why you're wearing safety gear. You always assume the chemicals are hazardous, and in this case, they are. Okay, now put it down on the table, and, and then hold the white card behind it, because it wasn't hard easy to see. That's really okay, so we've got the green. We've got the black, as you call it, or brown. And then the, the, the uh, water part blends into that. So that wasn't kept separate. Then we've got clear, blue, and red. That's Boom. Crazy. So now, really quickly, we're going to do the same thing again, but with a smaller graduated cylinder. What? It's much easier. No, but you only have to put in, like, here's this one. Now, oh, tilt it, yeah. and this is much easier to keep separated. But put in maybe, oh, like, Giovanna, put in maybe, like, one or two squirts, like not even, because it, it'll fill up the whole thing. Like that only holds a little over 10. Yeah, maybe like one squirt of each. Yeah, one squirt. But you still have to tilt it at an extreme angle. One squirt, Black. maybe Black. even not a full squirt, because, yeah, maybe like most of that, just until you can see the layer. But this one, we might be able to keep them all separated if you do it very carefully. I would say especially the next one is the one you want to do very carefully. So the reason we're doing this, this is the way we normally do the column in our labs. I just thought we could get away with doing this big one with, with uh, six liquids. It's kind of cool. Usually we only use four. Now we're using six. And Giovanna's technique is actually very good. I don't know if I would hold it that way. I don't know if I would hold it. Yeah, I okay. know. Okay, so then what's the next one, Lucy? Okay, just, and I would be careful when you straighten it out, okay. do it very slowly. Okay, ready? Okay. Okay. This, I messed it up. Very last time. slowly, very slowly. Let it pour out slowly. Most of that pipette, very slowly. It's hard to see whether they're, I can't see what's going on there because your fingers, but. Just, if I let it go, it'll... And when you straighten it out, do it very, correct it very slowly. I wouldn't put in the whole pipette, most of it. Let's stop. Because now straighten it out. Let's see. Straighten it out slowly, slowly, slowly. Let's see, let's I see. I got it. You got it? Oh, now you got it, but you got to hold the white background. It's not obvious. Yes. Now do the same thing. What's the next one, Lucy? Four is yellow. 
Okay, and again, tilt the, Giovanna, when you're tilting and straightening it out, do it very now slowly. Down. You still have to tilt it a lot because you know what, that can go through and agitate the one below it as well. Go ahead and put that whole squirter in, Giovanna. We gotta go to. The, let's get the last two. Okay, that's enough. That's enough. Okay, get the oh, next. I got it. I think I, this one's. Okay, let's work. just get all. Let's get before we look at it. Let's just add the other two. Next one is blue, my favorite color. <laughs> oh, it is. Blue is your favorite color. Yeah, it was like purple. Oh. Are you sure? Is that why your goggles are blue? <laughs> Isn't it yeah, easier to keep any. them separated here? Yep, and now get one last, what's the last color? Um, red. Okay. Oh, it's right there, right next to you. Oh man, this is it. Oh, please don't fail. Some layers are easier to keep separated from, uh, like from each other than hard. others, and the reason is we'll talk about later in chemistry B. Okay, I'll tell you. <laughs> Polarity, okay. <laughs> Okay. Now, Giovanna, hold it up, and then what you want to do is take the base off very carefully and hold gently, 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 oh. and then hold it with the white card behind it from, from my perspective. That's beautiful. And picture perfect. So what do we have here? Uh, move it closer. Move the white card closer. So we got green, black, clear, uh, blue, and red. Where's Ooh. the yellow? The oh, the yellow isn't very obvious, but the yellow's in there. I guess we have clear and yellow. Clear, then yellow, but the yellow doesn't look super yellow because it's so thin. Here, look, put this behind this one because it looks more yellow here so because of uh, it's thicker. But it actually, oh, it is yellow. I can see now. What about a cork? Putting a cork in it. Put a cork in it, Giovanna. Wait, what? <laughs> So what does that tell you? Careful, careful. What does that tell you about the density of a cork? The cork is less than one. It's less than one because one would be about here where the water would be. So it's a lot less than one. Have, like, okay, it in. and now the cork wouldn't fit in this one. That's the only problem. Yeah. Mm. Okay, so put a cork in it, Giovanna. I love to say that. So what we're going to do now, the last part, is we're going to find the density of the aluminum foil. And aluminum foil, even though it's too thin, if you look at it from the side, it's just too thin to see its height. It's still a rectangular block with the width and a length, and then the height is just much smaller than that. So we're going to actually have to calculate the height. So this is one of the few examples where I'm giving you the density, and you're going to use that to find the thickness of the aluminum foil, which is the H. Okay, so go ahead, Giovanna. Measure out a big piece of aluminum foil. <clears throat> Maybe a little more than that. Yeah, that looks good. That looks good. That's a good piece. And then the trick is try to get us. It won't make a huge difference. Try to get it as square as possible. Well, that's a good technique. Pushing down along the side. It came out pretty straight. Oh, that came out nice and straight. Okay, now flatten it out. You don't want it bent, and you want to measure its width and its length. And Lucy's going to write them down. So you can put it diagonally like this, and make sure to measure right along, right near this, right near one edge. Okay, just as long as you're close to an edge, it won't be at a diagonal. So what are you getting 86. here? 86.7. Okay, what's the other dimension? This way. Give Lucy her pen in and she can write it down. I'm just gonna come over there. Now what is that, Lucy? That's the length, yeah. And then what would this one be, Giovanna? This would be the what? This would be the height. The width. The width, I don't know. So width yep. equals that would be thirty point three. 
There. Okay, now we gotta fold it up. Go ahead and fold it up, Giovanna. It's gotta be small enough so that our little master measurer well, can measure the mass. Right? Yeah, those are all in centimeters. And then on. he's turning it on. What else are you gonna do? Just to be safe, what do you always do? Okay. Right. right, it's always a good idea. Okay, and then Giovanna's gonna hand it to you. That's good, that's good. As long as it fits on there. She folded it up, it's the same piece. And what's the mass, Ian? Say it out. Um, 11.84 grams. Boom, yes, exactly. So now, using that information, you can calculate the thickness of the aluminum foil by using D equals M over V. And we're going to put the M in that we just got there. That's the M. We've got two parts of our volume, but we're missing one part. That's the H. So this is the, really the trickiest. I would write M equals, M equals. Okay. This is really the trickiest part of the whole lab. Trickiest part of the whole lab is to calculate the thickness of the aluminum foil. So there are the numbers. Okay. And guess what, you guys? That's it. Oh, okay. You did it. That was great teamwork. Yeah. Team Pemble, you guys no, did a great job. No, no be careful with careful with the electronic balance. So you guys did a great job. You want to say bye-bye? Bye. Bye, I'm taking my gloves off. Oh. <laughs> Go wash your hands, Ian. <laughs>